Hello, welcome to this first part of my semester project. Uh, in my semester project, I will be creating a how-to guide uh, for uh, visualizing geographical information and uh, geospatial data using uh, Tableau, and also hopefully uh, QGIS, an open source uh, GIS uh, software, and talking a little bit about the differences between a uh, data visualization tool like Tableau and an actual uh, piece of GIS software. Uh, so this is the first part of uh, my t tutorial series. I've also uh, written a guide uh, to accompany it, uh, which is a little bit more in depth. Uh, but anyways, uh, I hope you enjoy. Uh, I also want to begin my screencast uh, by uh, directing viewers to uh, various resources from help.tableau.com, uh, as well as the uh, Tableau uh, YouTube uh, video channel. Uh, particularly the pre presentations created by Ashwin Kumar, uh, who is the product manager in the Tableau Maps department. If you're trying to learn how to use Tableau and create better maps with Tableau, uh, that's the first place I would go, and I can't re recommend those resources uh, highly enough. So in this particular screencast, we'll be going over some introductory concepts in uh, GIS data, uh, specifically the different, different types of uh, GIS data, uh, roster and vector data, uh, and also uh, what a coordinate reference system is, or a CRS. Uh, and these are some uh, uh, basic concepts that will come up in uh, the uh, future screencasts. So it's just good to be aware of them. Uh, another quick note is uh, this map of China on the right, on the left here, is uh, cited by Edward Tufte as maybe the very first data map of all time. And it's uh, known as the Yuji Tu, or Maps of the Tracks of Yugong. And it was created in the 12th century during the Song Dynasty. It's the first known example of a gridded map that we have, which allows for a much higher level of precision in determining the locations of geographical features. And its precision is all the more remarkable when one considers that this map was cut into a stone stell or pillar. In any case, maps have been with us for almost as long as we've had the written word. And people have been making maps at an incredibly high level of precision and detail for almost thousands, for thousands of years. Uh, the making of maps combines art, science, mathematics, and exploration and represents a culmination of the culture's achievement in a truly unique way. First, a word about GIS. GIS, or Geographical Information Systems, will be a $100 billion industry by 2026. And every day, each of us is responsible for creating an enormous amount of data through our browsing, purchasing, and communication history. Much of this data is tagged with a location variable. Geospatial data no longer simply reflects the location of stable features, such as rivers, cities, mountain ranges, swamps, etc., but the second-by-second -second movement, thoughts, and activities of human beings through physical space. This information is immensely valuable and immensely complex. It's valuable to journalists, to advertisers, to governments, to researchers of all kinds. Visualizing this data by means of maps is a way of finding interesting geographical relationships in the information, identifying insights and clusterings and trends. Maps are fairly inflexible when it comes to data visualizations. Unlike, say, a scatter plot, they are ill-suited for showing more than a couple of data variables at a given time. In a map, the best, most specific cues, position, proximity, length, area, etc., are already taken to convey geographical information. The poor person composing the data visualization is left with the scraps. So use a map to display data when geographical relationships in the data are relevant and illuminating, but avoid them or at least de-emphasize them when there are more or when there are other more relevant features in the data than location. As Tufty notes, showing data for space, spatially located nouns is a difficult problem. Already both dimensions of paper are used for the underlying map. Then two-dimensional circles represent a one-dimensional number. In the example here on uh, this slide, I've used the Superstore data from Tableau just to show an example of data that's probably best conveyed in some other method than a map. If you see, if you see on uh, the left, we have a map showing with little circles that show the profit in each state. Uh, each of those circles is sized according to the profit variable. Uh, but if you try to imagine comparing the size of different uh, circles and maybe ordering them by which states are the most profitable to which states are the least profitable, it, it would be a nightmare. Uh, you would have to do all kinds of uh, calculations about the relative area of circles and sometimes comparing uh, an area variable across a map
can be uh, difficult. It's hard, for instance, from this visualization, uh, we can see that California and New York are two of the more profitable states, but it's hard to tell just by eyeballing it uh, which state between uh, California and New York is more is more profitable. And it gets even harder as the circles get smaller. I can't really uh, tell you if, uh, uh, for instance, Kansas or Tennessee are uh, between the two, which is the most uh, most uh, profitable. On the right, of course, we have a little bar graph, uh, which gives us that information nicely uh, sorted uh, by profitability. Uh, so on the right, we just have an example of the same information uh, uh, conveyed in a much better, much more uh, economical and clear form uh, than by using a map. Uh, using a map can be seductive. Maps are pretty and maps are familiar, uh, but sometimes it's not the best way to convey your data. Let's go over briefly the two major data types for geospatial information. Uh, here we have roster and vector data. Some file formats, such as KML, which was developed by Google for their Google Earth project, integrate the two data types together in a single file. But in general, when working with map data, you are either working with vector files, uh, the most common being the Esri shape file, uh, the extension .shp, or GeoJSON, or uh, is another popular uh, vector file format, or roster files, such as the GeoTIFF file type, or really any other pixelated image file. It is incredibly common to overlay vector layers over roster layers uh, for data visualizations, so you get the relative uh, benefits of both kinds of data in your uh, <coughs> on your map. And Tableau supports this uh, capability, uh, as do all uh, GIS systems. But when modifying or creating a new geograph new geographical information, one generally is working with one type of data or the other. Vector data is made up of points and lines, which, when connected in an order specified by the, specified by the vector file, make polygons, which, when plotted on a two- or three-dimensional coordinate system, make up the maps we're all familiar with. The most common vector data file type is the Esri shape file, .shp, which, at a bare minimum, must be accompanied by an index.shx file and attributes.dbf file to open in Tableau. The shape files contain the information about the relative location of the points and the order in which they should be connected, and the other file types contain attributes and additional information useful for projecting these uh, shape files on, uh, on a map. <coughs> Vector files are familiar and easily interpreted, easily modified, although not in Tableau. They represent sharp delineations between features, such as borders, rivers, mountain ranges, etc., whether physical or political, uh, with a great deal of clarity. The downside, of course, is that sometimes these sharp distinctions can distort or at least present a simplistic view of the data. Another advantage to working with vector data is that it is very easy to uh, assign attributes to points, lines, shapes in uh, vector data. Uh, you can uh, uh, name, for instance, a shape, you know, call it the state of Missouri uh, in this example. You can name a point uh, based on the city. You can assign those uh, shapes and points attributes, such as uh, population or uh, uh, really anything you can think of. It's very easy to associate uh, uh, information, whether that be come in the form of a string, like a city name, or a quantity, such as a population figure, with a particular uh, uh, feature of your map. Uh, roster data, on the other hand, is any kind of gridded or pixelated data. Anyone who has ever opened a JPEG or a TIFF file is familiar with roster data. Satellite images and other orthophotos, uh, such as images taken by a drone or by airplane, are the most common type of roster map files we encounter today. Uh, the image on this page is a kind of roster file known as a digital LG elevation model, or DEM, taken of the Grand Canyon by a NASA satellite in 2020. In a digital elevation model, hue and saturation of individual pixels are used to encode topographical information and to correct distortions in orthophotos, or overhead photos, caused by ripples in the contours of a landscape. Because roster data 
encodes geographical information by individual pixel through variations in hue, brightness, and saturation. It is excellent at depicting detailed surface textures and fine gradations. Of course, with that extra level of detail comes larger, more complex files. <clears throat> Roster data is harder to edit than vector data, and it's harder to associate string or number attributes with features because it's pixel-based, not geometry-based. Any software which can display vector data will recognize, for example, that a particular polygon represents a single unified entity, and so can associate attributes with the whole, as well as the part. Not so with, the ro with roster data, which encodes values to individual pixels. Also, while roster data shows subtle changes in the physical landscape quite well, often what we're interested in in data visualization are political or social demarcations, things that don't show up so easily on a satellite. We have to draw those borders. Uh, so the borders of nations and metropolitan areas, uh, these cannot really be represented well with roster data. Uh, Whenever we need a sharp uh, demarcation, a sharp, uh, precise uh, line uh, separating states, separating nations, uh, vector data is what we need to choose. In most cases, the admittedly simplified picture of things provided by a line map made using vector data will be more than sufficient for most data visualizations. Let's talk briefly about coordinate reference systems, or CRSs. So even if you have shapefiles or roster data containing geographical information, you still need a way to locate this information somewhere on the surface of the Earth. Otherwise, you just have a jumble of lines, points, and shapes, or in the case of roster data, pretty pixels, pretty pictures, without any broader geospatial context to give them meaning. It's actually a fairly complex problem. Remember that the Earth is an irregular sphere shape, so there has to be some way to accurately transform that sphere into a two-dimensional map without excessive distortion. A coordinate reference system is a mathematical model which is used to project geographical information accurately onto the Earth's surface to make a two-dimensional map out of the uh, uh, which accounts for the curvature of the Earth. <clears throat> The most famous CRS, or coordinate reference system, is the Mercator Projection, which has been with us for 400 years and is a familiar resident of, resident of most uh, high school classrooms. The Mercator Projection is a cylindrical projection, which basically accounts for the horizontal or longitudinal uh, curvature of the Earth, but not the vertical or latitudinal curvature, leaving us with a map of the Earth that is most accurate at the equator and grows progressively more distortedly large as we approach the poles, sort of like a funhouse mirror. <clears throat> That's actually what uh, you see here. Uh, uh, notice the farther north you go, uh, Greenland, for instance, in this map is, appears much, much larger than it actually is. Uh, so does Russia and Canada and Alaska. Uh, Alaska is almost as big as the continental United States in the Mercator projection uh, be because it doesn't account for the uh, uh, latitudinal north-south curvature of the world. Uh, so. Uh, Objects on the poles on the poles seem a lot bigger than they actually are. <clears throat> there are many hundreds of different coordinate reference systems currently in use, many of them created by cartographers working in different parts of the world in different industries. The U.S. Census Bureau, for example, has its own CRS called NAD83, and when it releases its data to the public, it does so using this CRS. Other nations and agencies, industries, states, etc. use proprietary CRSs, all of which have slight advantages and disadvantages depending on what you're doing and what part of the wor world you're doing it in. This slide you see the difference between certain projection models uh, depending on the math that's used to project, the, project this map of the United States it will be curved or uh, bent or displayed in different ways. Uh, so here are four different projection models and four different ways of showing the same data. So you can kind of see the importance of, uh, uh, <clears throat> of a coordinate reference system, or at least using consistent coordinate reference systems when working with geographical data. Um, a GIS software will be able to convert between uh, different CRSs without any difficulty and save your data into whatever CRS you like. Tableau does not do this. Tableau automatically converts whatever spatial file you import into the WGS84 CRS. This is good for most data visualization applications, but not for extremely high precision cadastral or geological surveying applications, where everything must be precise down to the level of a meter. 
Well, thank you uh, for listening to this uh, first part of the series, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy the other videos. Thank you.